Thanks, mate. Ross, your allegiance. Thanks for the intro. Uh, I'm sure uh, Nick and I, our egos are ballooning through the roof right now, CEOs and founders of these amazing companies. Uh, but uh, when it comes down to it, uh, we both just have a passion for communication, both have a passion for social media, and we both love a bit of banter, which is why we wanted to do this as more of a talk show than a presentation. Um, people, if I can just reiterate that fact that would love you to jump in and use that Q&A field because there are so many questions out there right now. We've only got 30 to 40 minutes, really, 45 minutes maybe, to cover things off. So the more questions we can answer, the better. And we would love to be doing that, a lot of Q&A. Otherwise, Nick and I have been known to talk for hours um, and we can happily do that, but we would love to be able to answer your questions as well. Nick, um, let's kick off. Um, I'm going to be sort of directing the conversation, folks. So if you see me dominating a little bit, that's why. It's my job. Um, and Nick is an absolute legend and subject matter expert when it comes to social communication. So, Nick, for you, I'm, let's just kick off with what do, you, what do you feel like the tone is like out there in the market at the moment? Yeah, it's interesting. And thanks, Glenn. Um, and thanks, everybody. Thanks, Ice House, for having me here. The, ice, uh, the, uh, the tone has changed completely since last week. So obviously, last week, going, you know, announcement uh, being made and us going into lockdown. And obviously, here we're talking about social media and a crisis. There was a couple of days there where I don't think anybody quite knew exactly what to talk about. And everybody spoke about the crisis. And it was all quite negative and quite doom and gloom. But it is definitely changing. And I think the tone is changing to we're getting a bit sick of talking about coronavirus mm -hmm. and COVID-19. We're getting a bit sick of downloading guides about coronavirus and COVID-19. Um, we're getting a bit sick of seeing exponential graphs being shared. And the tone is changing to certainly here in New Zealand, a bit more positivity. We're getting a bit more, you know, let's make people laugh. Let's focus on the positive. Let's, uh, let's have a good positive outlook as compared to the doom and gloom that we had last week. Yeah, for sure. Now, I might take a little step back. You know, it was something that we shared yesterday in, in uh, another one of the Ice House webinars was there is this uh, cycle of human behavior in times of crisis, which has uh, come from a lot of psychological uh, papers and psychology papers and reviews and things like that, where when we come into a time of crisis, anybody, when they come in through a time of crisis, there is the stages that we go through. The first is shock. And when you're going through shock, it's a little bit of shutdown. I'm just, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Uh, and then we move into the state of confusion where I think I need to be starting to do something. I'm not really sure what it is. Then we get into acceptance as this is where we're at. I need to start doing, I definitely need to start doing something. And then it is planning and then it is action. And for me, that whole cycle has just been played out in this last two weeks really, really clearly. We're coming into, coming into lockdown. The whole tourism industry and hospitality were pretty much in shock already, and the rest of the country was just wavering, going, let's look and see what happens. Then, bang, 11.59 p.m. Wednesday night, everyone was, hell, I'm sitting at home, I'm working remotely, or I don't have a business. I don't actually know what to communicate. I'm going home and we're just sticking our hands up for a few days. Now we're into that, that definite phase where people know they need to start doing something and they're looking for answers. So anything in and around planning and how the next steps that people can take, I think is really, really advantageous for you to be communicating right now at this very moment. Nick. Yeah, um, I think there's one thing in that as well is there was a lot of companies that had a whole lot of scheduled content before and actually I don't think it was the the midnight Wednesday I think it was the Monday announcement because that's when it just went nuts and all the action started happening and that's when businesses started really struggling straight away um, but a lot of companies had scheduled content and they weren't checking that content and that content still went out one of the first things we did was go and check all of our clients content and make sure that it was now still relevant um, and a lot of content went out that wasn't and it got a lot of brands in trouble but actually one thing, because you, you mentioned obviously they're planning, and right now the news, I've never been, I don't even recall a situation where things change so quickly by the day. And content today that you've got scheduled for tomorrow might not be relevant tomorrow. So literally you've got to be checking every single piece of content and planning ahead. But some of the kind of content that's really, really working 
is that feel good stuff like celebrate the essential services talk about you know i love what's going on in the uk with the whole movement of the clapping every day and the celebration of the nhs that kind of stuff and to and then glenn i've seen you out there for example rallying people to um rallying espresso to get coffee in the hospitals that kind of stuff all just works so well because everybody wants to feel a part of something good and i think any way you can bring your brand into that and actually congratulate people celebrate people celebrate the success uh, even a lot of the kind of content around of just celebrating staying at home what a good job you're doing helping millions of people um everyone's shared a similar theme but then brands i've seen like nike have gone and done some really clever advertising about you know want to play in front of millions of people now's your chance play at home um and that kind of message is really working and really resonating because it's bringing the tribe together we're all in this together and any angles you can bring out around that while also checking the news every single day, even if you might not want to as, as marketers, we kind of at least need to be across it in terms of relevance. Has something happened today that's changed our message for tomorrow dramatically? Yeah, for sure. Now, fundamentally, does the, the strategy around communication change whether there is a crisis or not? Just for me, it's the frequency that you need to assess the market versus good communication skills you need to assess it frequently and also you need relevance like we have mm. a an, an internal term called peer review so where our content gets reviewed by a peer at all times and under normal circumstances that was somewhat of a spell check really somewhat of a spell check and making sure that it wasn't you know wasn't off off point whereas now it's really yeah it's that appropriateness check and I think mm -hmm. if you are one person, if you're a digital marketing team of one, you need to bring someone in to peer review that uh, no matter what. So it's, yes, things are, have got to be relevant, they're changing by the day, but sometimes, and I've seen a lot of brands and people get caught out with what they thought was relevant, but suddenly it's gone live and everybody else thought it wasn't. So it's, um, it's a time to get someone else to check your content no matter what. So your tone is very important right now, right? Tone is important and it's, you know, I've seen people get caught with that too, where they, they wrote something that they thought was the right tone, but it got misinterpreted a different way. Often, of course, video tone can be heard. I think even that comes back to communication, not just with your clients, but with your staff. You know, sometimes tones of emails can, can be misinterpreted um, and, and with your clients, but certainly on social media, it's far more public if that gets misinterpreted and hence that peer review process to check that tone, check that message, get some agreement that this is on point and relevant. Um, I don't think people mind that you're selling right now and really you should be able to sell. You just gotta sell in an appropriate way. People don't mind if you're advertising right now, but you've gotta advertise in an appropriate way. And yeah, that, that's the key thing to be remembering, I think is the appropriateness of, yeah, and that day-to-day -day change. You know, this is something that I've been really, really hot on um, over the last few days, especially with all of all of our clients as well, is absolutely now is completely appropriate to go out there with sales messaging. But it, again, tone is so critically important, and the the old school strategy and tactics around scarcity and fear um, and things like that is just it's not appropriate. It it hasn't been appropriate for a long time. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but now even more so, you're going to be doing more brand damage, um, n n even if you do pick up some sales. So what are your recommendations in regards to the types of messages? If you're, if you're looking to sell through social uh, versus education and things like that, if you're looking to get a sales message out through social, what are your tips around tone messaging and, and what you've seen that's working right now? Yeah, and it's... <laughs> We obviously some of the stuff that's working the most. Like we have um, clients in HR that are booming. Mm. We have clients in accounting and legal that are booming. We have clients. You know, there's obviously the booming ones that have got obvious messages to get out there. Yeah. So that's quite easy. Then there's the other clients who they, their businesses are shut. They actually, you know, and in some regards, I think, well, why, why sell? So it's not selling. It's prepping. It's engaging. It's keeping front of mind. It's trying to add value. Trying to add some humour. Trying to and I'm gonna talk a bit of marketing language, but I think most people here are marketing, trying to get your brand message out there to a cold audience who don't know you yet and make them a warm audience. And by from cold to warm in social media terms, we want a like or a comment or a share or even a click through to our website or them to like our page. Um, we just want some form of engagement. 
we've gone from a cold audience that didn't know us to a warm audience. That might just take a, a clever piece of content, which is not selling. However, we are building a warm audience that we can sell to when the timing is right. And I think now is a perfect time to do that for businesses that are closed. Then there's the businesses that are open. And, you know, gosh, we've got a, um, we've got a client who bakes bread and break, bakes goods. They were closed and then suddenly they were open. Suddenly there's a shortage of bread and they're allowed to transport that all over the country. And we did one post and it just went like hotcakes. Like we weren't selling. We just said we can now deliver. Bread. Selling hotcakes? Um, and well, yeah, not quite, but potentially. Um, that could be a good idea. Um, but that just went nuts. It went nuts because, because people wanted it. Um, so that's not even really selling. It's providing, if you're adding value in this time, you know, I'm talking to another client today, uh, so a prospective client who's now uh, sells sneeze screens, you know, these plastic screens we're now mm -hmm. seeing in the supermarket. And they, um, they said, look, shortly, the post offices, the cafes, the restaurants, everybody's going to need these. So for me, we're not really selling, right? We're just going to get that message out and go, hey, you need one of these when you open again. This is where you get one. Um, and that is relevant. Other businesses, though, think even if you're closed, going back to that first point, even if you're closed, how can you engage that audience and add some value now and make them smile, make light of the situation in an appropriate way, get your brand in front of them, get them to engage with your brand, build a warm audience today that's likely to do business with you when they can. Yep. Yeah, for me, that's absolutely critical. And I think you knocked it on the head there when you, when you said it in and around that, where it's adding value to the situation. So at the moment, humor is working really, really well. Um, education is working really, really well. And if you combine the two and you can make it edutainment, um, fantastic. So building resonance with your audience. So uh, John Key picked it last week when he said there's three types of businesses at the moment, really. There's those that are essential services and can operate fully and they're actually booming. There's those with limited services that uh, have got some people working remotely that are probably, you know, they've, they've definitely taken a hit and they're doing the best they can and they're going to see what happens coming through lockdown. And there are those that are shut. And out of those ones that are shut, there is a big chunk of those that may not come out. But there is also those that are going, well, what do we do so that when we do come back online, we can hit the ground running and whatever the new normal is. And, I, and I, it's not going to be as it was. So I think you, you need to think of it's a slightly different strategy depending on which category of that you fit into. If it's business as usual and you're an essential service, you can literally be out there saying, hey, we're running. We're, we're up, we're running, these are the services that are operating, we're here to help you, just click here, or whatever. Uh, for businesses like ours, where it's, we, you know, we've got staff and teams that are working remotely, then, you know, there is, there are different levels of service that can be provided. So building resonance, building your audience, warming them up, because, you know, for us as Connector, we're certainly doing business and we're signing new clients, but we're not out there selling and promoting. We're talking about what people should be doing. And then people are coming to ask, asking more questions and then saying, can you help us? Yeah. And then there is the likes of tourism, hospitality and things like that. Where look, sometimes life's shit and business sucks and there is nothing you can do to generate that revenue. But you can still create engagement with that audience so that you are front of mind when you can open those doors again. So cafes, restaurants, all of those businesses don't go into full hibernation. I think it, now is the time more than ever that you could be investing in doing social media and, and, and having some humor, getting some inspiration and some education out there. Yeah, I think as well that, they can be doing that right now, but they can also be doing something that I don't see many brands at all doing yet. And that is, like, at the moment, we don't know when lockdown will end. We just don't know. But we do know that it will end, right? This is not forever. It will yep. end. We will come out of lockdown. We'll go from level four to level two or three. Um, and there's a message that every single business that's suddenly gone from closed to open will be scrambling to get out there. What do we want to say now? Now we're open mm -hmm. again. How do we get people in? What's our offers? What, are we, what have we got to do? What is now appropriate? And I think every single one of you can think about that now and can start to plan that content now. Because if your doors are closed, they're going to open. Whether it's in mm -hmm. two weeks or four weeks or six weeks, we don't know. 
but you could have the most clever on point marketing content for your brand ready so that whether the day it's announced, probably the day it's announced, because that's when business will start to go again. Like mm -hmm. when Jacinda announced that we were going to level four, that was the moment it started changing, not the moment we actually went there, it started changing when it was announced. And I think as soon as it's announced, we're going from level four to level three, there's just a completely new message. And if you can start planning that message now, what do you want to say to your clients when that happens? And in the meantime, be focusing on building those warm and engaged audiences with resonance, et cetera, and then being ready with that message. I think you'll be ahead of everybody else because as soon as we get that announcement, if you can be out there with your message, very relevant, very appropriate plan for this moment, because we all know it's coming, um, then you can certainly be ahead of everyone else who starts scrambling for what content should I do now? Absolutely. And from, from, a, from a pure sort of project management and business coaching point of view, that is so relevant across your entire business, not just the social media and the marketing that you're doing, because so many businesses have got projects that are in limbo right now. And there are tradies and all sorts of other external resources that when we know, hey, you're going to have access to that site or you can come into my business and things like that, everyone is going to be scrambling for those services. So if you can start communicating to your essential services in your business sense, not as in, in the COVID-19 sense, those essential services that help your business operate, that come into your network and help your business function from a day to day, then you can actually develop a comms strategy around that to your client base and your potential client base saying, hey, we're not just ready to go. We're, we're ready to hit the ground running. We have all of our suppliers lined up. We have all of our um, key channels lined up so that anybody that places orders, anybody that wants to do anything from day one, we're going to be hitting the ground running. And those that leave it until that announcement are going to be scrambling. And so their level of service is going to be lower. The outcomes that they're going to get are going to take longer and they may be of less quality. And so you can really maximize that in regards to your comms strategy now to start, number one, communicating internally with all your partners and then start sowing the seeds externally. Maybe when we get that announcement of when we're coming down into that other level, levels is, hey, we're ready to go now. Get your orders in, all right? Book that time in to see us now because we know exactly what is going to happen when we hit the, when we hit the ground and, the, and that green light comes on. And there's things that brands can be doing too. Like I think, um, I can't remember who it was that started the uh, soscafe.nz. I'm going to pop that yeah, link out to everybody awesome. in case people aren't aware of it, but it is awesome. And we're getting our local cafe on there because it wasn't on there just so that we could mm. then, um, so that we could then buy some vouchers. But let me just pop that out. Um, but basically things like that, right? If you are a cafe, you can start to sell vouchers now, or yep. you can go on SOS Cafe and, and start to sell coffees now to get some revenue. But there's like, you know, hairdressers can start to sell tickets now. Okay, we're going to be really busy. Everybody wants a haircut when we come out. Who wants ticket number one? Who wants ticket number two? You know, you can be the first one through the door. We don't know the date yet, but we know you want a haircut as soon as we come out. So let's start selling tickets. And we can start to get revenue. And I think for no matter what your business is, even like say for me and you, Glenn, we're in social, uh, in social media, we're in digital marketing, but there are businesses that weren't relevant businesses for us two weeks ago than now they are. Like, for example, sneeze screens. Um, and I would have never thought of that. They contacted me. But there's other businesses that we as digital marketers could be looking at and going, hey, we could help them now, whereas they weren't on our radar two weeks ago. And I think every single one of you, but I shouldn't say every single one, everyone's got a unique situation, but many of you, most of you, there'll be something you can start to do now, um, target some new demographics, get some pre-orders, uh, whatever that may be. And of course, always check in that appropriateness to make sure that that is appropriate today. Otherwise, just get it ready for the day it is appropriate. Yes. So my, my question to the audience is, is who's actually got a, a re-entry um, comms plan in place already? Because we may be weeks, we may only, we may only be two weeks away. We may be a little bit longer, but you should be planning these things now. Um, there are a couple of questions coming through. Do you want us to start tackling those, Ross? Um, yeah. Well, I'll, I've just started sort of uh, making some notes on these so I can sort of take you, take you through them if you guys are ready for that. Yep. I, yep. I think one thing I'd like to talk about first, maybe, is, is leadership. Um, and so there's, there's, I suppose, different levels of comms that are going to be coming out from different organizations. We've sort of attacked it from a, let's say, a, a typical SME perspective at the moment. But I think 
as the larger businesses that are out there, some of your hotel chains, some, you know, I mean, in New Zealand has done, I think, a fantastic job in regards to outward communication from a, from a leadership perspective. They've been open, they've been transparent. They have laid the cards on the table saying, we're going to take a multi-billion dollar hit and we're probably going to have to lay off 35% of our workforce. So not only are they communicating with their internal staff, they're actually setting the nation up so that we are ready and prepared to see you know, a new Air New Zealand and what that may look like. Our expectations of what Air New Zealand is going to be operating like in this new world is going to be drastically different than what they were six weeks ago. Because are they now going to be the number one airline in the world doing all the amazing ads with international superstars and connected all over the world? No, they are primarily going to be a domestic airline with some international routes as they get clearance to go into those those markets. So think about what the new Zealand will look like and how you need to position yourself and start communicating that out as well. So we need to start thinking, can we act as leaders in our industry and leaders in our, in our region and start actually rallying the troops behind us? Who can we support? How can we, how can we band together? Um, like you said right at the start, people love feeling that they're part of something. So if you can take a leadership role and get people rallied up and, and behind something, that's a great strategy to, you know, number one, increase engagement, become front of mind, but also increase that trust factor as well. So that's my little... It's probably a good segue as well into one of... Gemma's got sort of two parts to, to her, um, well, two questions mm -hmm. really. And one of them, you spoke about leadership and, well, specifically, um, you know, to staff. But I, I suppose she's asking around you know, how honest to be with your customers about the situation and how to ask for more customers. So speaking without getting any, you know, keyboard warriors or backlash, she's keen to preserve the good PR that they've gotten from this. So that, you know, it seems as though they've gotten some good comments and some PR um, on their social channels um, throughout this mm -hmm. period, but how to preserve that. Nick? Um. What, the, the bit that caught my attention most in there was around the backlash. I mean, in terms of how one is to be with your clients, um, 100% honest. I think this is a time for transparency with everybody. And it's a time for transparency with your staff. And that is, you know, using Glenn's point on leadership in New Zealand, that is leadership. At the moment, especially, there's other times when maybe staff don't need to know everything in your business. Right now, they, well, I believe it's fair that they do. And that stretches to clients as well. So I think be completely honest. I also, um, I, there's, there's keyboard warriors, there's trolls, there's people that will criticize you no matter what. Um, and actually, probably more than ever in my life, I couldn't care less about them. And I've got quite mad when I've seen people saying things like, you shouldn't be advertising right now, or you shouldn't be doing business right now. Because if we don't, if we don't, if everybody takes that approach and we all go, we better sell nothing, do no business, buy nothing. I tell you, this recession will last 10 times longer because that's what, the economy is us buying stuff, us spending money, us paying our invoices, us keeping the supplies we can afford to keep and paying them. Um, that's that's how the economic worlds turn. So you know, I would say, you know, depends on the view you take, but my view is very strongly we need to keep the economy going. And by you selling product when you're perfectly allowed to sell it, and so long as it is appropriate today, then sell. Don't worry about the keyboard warriors. Just do that appropriateness check. Um, and be as open and honest as you possibly can be uh, with your customers. Tell them the truth. I, I had a conversation with a customer yesterday and I told him he presumed my business hadn't fallen. I told him that it had. And he said, oh, I better you know, help you out then. How about we do this? And gave me more work. I've probably had two or three conversations like that with clients who have said, I want to support your business. You're supporting ours. And that's come from me being completely honest with them about our situation. Um, and I think everybody should do the same. Absolutely. Um, we've taken a very, very similar approach. Uh, we have two businesses. One's very much a traditional search agency doing AdWords and NSEO and the, and the such like. We've taken around about a 70% hit year on year on what that was because we were very heavily embedded in the, in the tourism industry. We've been completely open about that with all our clients. Our consultancy connector is down about 30 to 40%. Um, and First thing that we did was talk to all of the people that we had commercial relationships with. We talked to our staff and, um, I was, you know, Nick was one of them actually. And 
they were the first people to turn around and say, look, don't worry about us. We're all going to pay our bills uh, because it is so critical. And we're getting a little bit off comms on social media here, but uh, this is something that I think is really important for everybody to, to realize. Every dollar that gets spent goes into that cash merry-go-round. And so if you can pay your bills, whether it's to your other advertising partners, if you're in the marketing and things like that, they can pay their bills and they then can pay salaries, which go to people that can buy your product and services. We need to keep that cash merry-go-round working. And you're completely, I think, completely okay in going out there and saying to the market, hey, look, right, times are tough. Times are tough for everybody, including us. We're trying to do the best we can. This is what we are doing to over-deliver on value for you right now. And I suppose you've touched on this uh, briefly as well with regards to being sort of honest as well and, and you know, opening up that communication with customers. And one of the questions from Lynn is specifically around, you know, motels and accommodation. You know, she does social media for, for them. They're obviously empty. They're panicking. Is there any other specific type of messages you think that would work for them? Because obviously no one's traveling. They're all shut. Lynn? <laughs> 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 tourism is a tough one, right? Tourism is tourism a tough one. We we need to start thinking of a domestic economy as opposed to international tourism in the short to medium term. So hotels, motels, I think are still going to survive. They're still going to, to be around. I think if anything's going to struggle more than anything else, it may be Airbnbs because of um, owners that have got overheads on mortgages where you've got Mar and Par investors. So you may find actually that when we get through this, it'll, it, it may get back to the good old 70s and 80s where, and 90s where your traveling sales reps, things like that are staying much more again in your motels and things like that. So think about uh, if, I was a, if I was a motel in a, in a region, I would still be out there communicating and posting and talking about planning. Are you planning your sales routes now? Are you, are you looking at doing your road shows? Right. We are still going to be open for business. We have things under control. Cool. The other thing is to look at joint ventures. Right. Um, one thing that I think is going to work really, really well as we come through this, everyone's going to be tight on budget. But if you can partner with complementary businesses in your area, so if you're a motel, you might want to be partnering with the local restaurants and pubs and, and so like so create your little business group that you can actually pull your resources to doing some social media advertising to actually generate some interest and packages maybe for your region. Think as a domestic tourism destination and pull your resources. So don't rely on the government to promote, you know, Horofanua or Wanaka or Tiana or wherever it is, get off your asses, pull your resources. If you're all competing against each other, you might be diluting the market and driving the price up. But if you actually pull your resources and put together some packages, then it could be a good little strategy for a win-win for your local domestic economy. Uh, a yeah, couple of other things, things there too, like one, one thought on uh, building warm audiences. Uh, I don't know where your motel or hotel is located, but for example, if it was targeting international travelers, then obviously that market has changed completely. So, mm -hmm. so to pivot now, and this is an essential pivot, I think some pivots, People are using this word pivot too much. I think some pivots are unnecessary. Some businesses will come back to normal. If it's international travel, then it will be quite some time before that comes back to normal. So to pivot now to, for example, business travel, domestic travel, and start to engage a different type of audience. So mm -hmm. that means you need a completely different type of content. Um, and that could mean even looking at JVs, it could mean, hey, well, if XYZ enterprise company has a big office nearby, they probably will pick up business travel again. Let's look at trying to orchestrate some kind of deal with them. Um, one other thing I think with hotels and motels is going to be the same as with cafes, with takeaways. People are going to have a big focus on cleanliness. And how do I know the person in that room before me didn't have the virus? And what are you doing about it to make it the cleanest motel in town? And if you can make it the cleanest motel in town and use that as a message of how you're doing it, the steps you're taking, what you're doing to make sure that your clientele are the, the safest in town, then that's just an example of the kind of message that you could start to at least think about now and then focus on when the time is right. Mm. And story sells as well, right? Don't be afraid to actually talk about what's going on with you, with your business. 
and in, in your community around you, people, people are, people are sick of out and out advertising. You know, you don't go to a barbecue and rock up to somebody and say, Hey, my name's Glenn. I run a uh, business coaching and marketing coaching business. Uh, do you want to do, do some work with me? No, you, you get to know somebody, you start, you start engaging with them and communicating with them and talking with them and finding out a little bit about them. And when they're interested in you and they start liking you, then they might think about doing business with you. So why, you know, social media is just the world's biggest barbecue, right? Don't, don't do the in your face ads right, right from day one, start telling stories, start creating engaging content that can provoke some interest and that's going to warm them so that when you do actually ask for the business, they, they resonate with you and your brand. There's certainly some tough times for the accommodation sector at the moment, that's for sure. Oh, um, brutal. But something I'm quite interested to hear about as well, actually, is uh, your thoughts on the next question here. What are your thoughts on the plethora of webinars and online events being offered? Which I suppose ties into your comments about um, you know, content and storytelling and, and all the rest of the moment. Mm -hmm. I bloody love it. I'm going to be blunt. Um, I, th I think it's fantastic. I think it's brilliant. Um, like anything, uh, those that do a good job will continue to do a good job and they will rise and they will get a, a larger audience and they will, they will rise to the top. Uh, those that give it a crack, think that they suck, don't try and improve, will drop off. And in the end, those that create their own media and create their own brand and start dominating the market will be the ones that will be ahead of the competition when they come out of it. That's me from a straight up blunt Glen Marvin, don't call, yeah, that's it for me. Yeah, I think um, it's obvious right now, we're all at home, we're all using Zoom, like Zoom has gone nuts, we're all here on a Zoom webinar right now. Uh, there's companies like the Ice House that used to do public events and, and now they can't. So temporarily, that is the right thing for companies to do. Mm. Um, and that is, it, again, an essential pivot. There's information, we can help people, we can help businesses. How can we do that right now? We can't have a phone call separately with the 140 or so people that are on this call. We can do that via a webinar. So I think, uh, yeah, webinars have been there for a long time. I've got a company, Trade with Precision, and we've been doing webinars for about 14 years. Um, and we thought they got a bit boring. So in the last few years, we thought they got a bit boring. But now, wow, they're back with a bang. It's back, baby. Um, and I think that the thing with webinars is just like your social media content is relevancy. And also being a little bit careful that the coronavirus message doesn't get too boring and mm. maybe switching from, yeah, I think over the coming weeks, at least, a little bit starting to switch from all the HR issues and the getting your wage subsidy and the restructuring your business and the pivoting to normal you know let's talk about business let's add some value maybe we can talk social media without talking social media in a crisis for example today yep. that's still relevant we're still here we've still got an audience um yeah i think in the coming weeks that'll become less the crisis talk will become less and it's back to more how do we add value for our clients in social media it's a lot easier now for people as well though being stuck at home with level four to engage with webinars and so on but what are your thoughts of when we do go down to a level two or level one eventually I mean, I, I still think webinars will still be relevant in the current climate, but what do you think might change or should change in that aspect to stay relevant? I think if we As go right going back to work more, you know, yeah. if we go right back to what we talked about right at the very start of this particular webinar is looking at the market, picking what's working, picking what's resonating and pivoting towards where, where you need to be. And in three or four weeks time or in a month's time or in six weeks time, it may be, you know, Connector, we're doing a daily webinar. In a month's time, we might be doing it once a week. Um, and also thinking about the content and what is resonating with the audience. We went very hard, very fast on education, education, education. This is what you need to do in a time of crises. This is how you need to lock down your business, do your expenses. Um, in six weeks' time, it might be the best sales strategies uh, coming, out of, coming out of lockdown. Um, but if all you do is dry content that is purely educational, then I, I honestly believe that your engagement level will drop significantly. You need to think about this sort of content and webinars a little bit like your general social strategy. Is it, it's not a one size fits all. What is, your, what is your strategy in regards to the mix of content? So with LinkedIn especially, we say 
you need to be doing kudos posts. So promoting somebody else, telling the world how they're doing a great job, some commentary. So what, have an opinion, right? If you've got an opinion on something, it'll increase your engagement and you will attract the people that agree with your opinion. And the people that don't agree with your opinion, we're probably never going to do business with you in the first place. Uh, there, is some, there is definitely a need for education. Yeah. And storytelling, those four core pillars around social media, on, especially for us on LinkedIn, I think still applies to the, the webinar strategy as well. I've got Dave Latelli on this afternoon on a, on a webinar that we're doing, talking about his story from going from a gang member to now having a, a, a health and fitness business where he's got 14,000 members. Um, and that's not education, but sometimes people just need that little bit of escape, that, that, that inspirational slash aspirational content that's going to help give them a little bit of motivation to get off their ass and do something themselves. Yeah, I think we've got probably time for, for one or two more and there's a few questions that are filtered in. So I'm trying to just navigate my way through them. I'm just trying to pick the most relevant ones here. But as I say, we will get to, to all of them. Um, if we can't uh, answer all of them right now, we, we will send them out and get the presenters to answer them. But just one here from Benjamin. Uh, what's your interpretation on how to judge sentiment? From your social followers uh, he launched an essential campaign yesterday the 300 plus transactions online uh, but then made a post on social to let their loyals know that they can offer some things for delivery and to pull the post because of the abuse <laughs> how do you avoid the witch hunt that the media is setting on retailers the demand is there but the, um, the attitude condemning the effort is there too I'd love to have a look at that particular post. Like obviously mm. offline, if Benjamin, if you wouldn't mind sending it to me, it'd be a lot easier to comment on because it's quite hard. You know, it comes back to something I said earlier about that peer review and making sure that things are appropriate and that can change from day to day. Um, I haven't seen anything to that extent that you're talking about. Um, sorry, no, I have. I haven't seen it like from ourselves or with our clients. Um, I'd like to have a look at it and maybe give you a few pointers on what we see in terms of relevance or where maybe a mistake was made. I'm not saying a mistake was but I'd really want to see the post. Um, and it depends on, you know, if everybody was saying bad stuff, probably you got it wrong. If there was a couple, then that's normal and stuff those guys. Like you're, you're allowed yep. to do business. So yeah. as the old saying goes, uh, haters going to hate, right? Um, and there will always be a percentage, especially in times of stress, that think that whatever you're doing is highly inappropriate and how dare you, because if, if I can't sell, you can't sell. And I know over the last few days, things have opened up for some retailers so that they can sell what are deemed essential items like blankets and things like that. So some e-commerce stores are starting to open up in and, around, in and around those areas. And I've seen a little bit of hate on that. But um, I think like any reputation management, it's probably important to respond to those, those hateful comments um, more along the lines of, Hey, everyone, every, everyone's got their right to opinion and I respect yours. I will send you a direct message and we can deal with this offline so that I can explain our situation. If you, if you respond like that, rather than getting into a fight online, then people see that you're, you're tackling it head on, you're acknowledging the complaint and it's being dealt with somewhere else. If you ignore it, um, then you're at your own peril. And, and the worst thing you can do is get into an online argument. And look, just one really uh, last quick question. Uh, we've got literally a couple minutes. So um, this seems to be quite popular, this sort of theme, uh, if it's in, within your forte. Thoughts on Google Ads uh, from Jess. We've paused for now due to costings, but not sure if this will have a negative flow on effect when we do unpause. I've got a great strategy for Google Ads right now, for, and it's not right for every business. but um, I would look at all the ads that you're running right now, duplicate the ad group, so copy it, so you can then pause the existing ad group um, if you haven't already, reword them so that it's worded in and around essential services, um, what you're doing during the shutdown, or book something for when we're coming back online, reduce, test reducing your CPCs down to 20% of what you were originally bidding for because if everybody else is stopping why should you all right now might be the time that if you can get all of those clicks through to your site start building that engagement get the facebook cookies tagging them 
um, so that you can remarket to them over the coming weeks and things like that. If your if your CPCs are way lower than what they are traditionally, and you and your you could pick up some sales, um, but more importantly, you are getting data and you're be you're going to be able to remarket to them as we come out of this, and you're going to position yourselves ahead of the competition. But be very very careful around the wording of your ads. Um, if you can't actually offer the services now, um, treat it as educational, and really really test pressure test that pricing in regards to what you're prepared to bid on, on on regards to the CPCs. I would definitely say pause the existing ad groups and create, um, clone them and, and create um, alternate ones so that you're running, a, in essence, an alternate ad strategy for the COVID-19 lockdown period so that you can fire the other ones back up. Because if you change all the wording and then you change it again, um, it can mess with the optimization.